Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the Art Store in New Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey in the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the Art Store. Jerry's joined at West Branch and with the best burgers in town. Jerry's has a full menu, but when you order the burgers steaming hot, they're made the way you like it. Stack time, made to order, add fries, and you've got a complete meal. Jerry's joined at West Branch, home of the best burgers in town. Rose Valley Winery committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold hardy grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beechwood Road, Rose City. Hi, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could join us on today's show. We're heading to Copper Harbor in Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula to visit with Jody Wheelis, a restoration artist. What does she restore? Quilts. And has devoted much of her time to perpetuating her talent, constantly in search of antique material to bring back the luster and continue the history and heritage of quilts over 100 years old as best she can. But first, on today's show, Sean Beardsley of Liberty Pines welcomes her new one-year-old student to the stables for training the natural horsemanship way. Then we bring you a new segment on Michigan Magazine as we search for Michigan's best music makers. Today's spotlight falls on Vicksburg, Michigan and the talent of Megan Ray. It's all coming up next on Michigan Magazine. I'd like to go out today somewhere new. I'm on my way, you come too. We'll find a place in the sun. In the sun. Okay, we're at Liberty Pines and we've got some excitement going on here today. Sean, what's what's happening here? Well, today I just got a new yearling Rocky Mountain horse. Next month in April, he'll be a year old. And I thought it'd be fun to show you some of the beginning stages of the training. And today we're going to do what I call the catching game. Uh, instead of you going out and catching your horse, I like to have the horse come catch you. So I'm going to start working with him to teach him how to come find me. Okay. Is, Can you describe a little bit about this new horse you have? Uh, where did you find him? And uh, Okay. Um, uh, we went down the road to the horse down in Kentucky, Don and I. And Don had a Rocky Mountain horse that we had gotten, I guess, two years ago. And year. Year. he just wasn't working out for us. Um, that's one thing I like people not to feel bad if the horse that you end up with isn't working and you're having issues or you figure out that this really just isn't the horse for me, go find one that is meant for you, that's a good partner for you because there's so many out there and both of us, we talked about it a lot and a lot of decision making and finally said, you know what, we're going to find a more suitable partner for Don. So okay. we bought this one, mainly uh, traded him, and we're going to be working with him. He decided to buy my other Rocky that I bought, um, the one that I trained also last year, Destiny. He's buying her, so this little guy I'm going to train, and he'll be up for sale. You've got a bundle of energy out there, too, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be fun. I'm so excited. Okay. Any name? Did you have any name yet? Well, his name is very superstitious, but we haven't come up with a nickname yet. We'll just see what his little personality is like first. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're all set. Are you all set? Oh, yeah. We're Don, ready you all to set? Go. Yes. Cliff, you all, all set? set? All, all set. All set. Let's do yeah, it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, 
show. Be sure and catch more of Natural Horsemanship with Sean Beardsley on future editions of Michigan Magazine. Now it's time to search for Michigan's best music makers. Today we discover Megan Ray of Vicksburg, Michigan, recording in the studios of R&R &R Productions in Wyoming, Michigan. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. For home, medical, and health care products, visit Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of Rose City City Limits. Rose City Drug has a complete diabetic department, including shoes. Serving Michigan for over 20 years, Rose City Drug, Rose City. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's and Mile for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mile. Quilting is becoming more and more of a national pastime. This art form is drawing artists and historians alike to its growing circle of enthusiasts. Michigan Magazine has found this unique world of quilting an inspiring blend of artistry and heritage preservation, a true depiction of ultimate Americana. We visited with many of these artists throughout our state who actively both practice and perpetuate the art of quilting. Pictorial quilters like Jackie Truett of Ravenna, who weaves into the very fabric slices of her family life from photos. We found quilting PBS television host Kay Wood to be proof of the growing interest around the world of quilting. Hundreds of viewers correspond with Kay each week, both accomplished artists and beginners. A quilt is both functional and a piece of art. As Kathy Zeilinger told us at her wool processing plant in Frankenmuth, the demand for handmade quilts continues to grow. There's a form of quilting we haven't explored yet, and that is the art of restoring heirloom quilts. Quilts that have been in the family for years and succumbed to the natural aging process, or that have been improperly stored. Michigan Magazine discovered this form of quilting while visiting beautiful copper country in the UP's Cumanal Peninsula. This is where we happened upon a little shop on Main Street in Copper Harbor called the North Station Gallery. Here, Jody Willis can be found late in the night, hand-stitching for hours at a time, working on restoring heirloom quilts for customers and for herself. Some quilts stayed back over a hundred years. These, most of these here, all of these here, happen to be family quilts. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, for example, is my great-grandmother's. Okay. On my father's side of the family. Now, how old of a quilt are we talking about now here? Well, this was done sometime in the 1880s, oh, they I figure. See. And my, gra my great-grandmother was born in 1852 in... Actually, Austria, which is now part of Yugoslavia, where she's born, and she brought this over with her to the United States, where they settled in Iowa. Mm -hmm. She died in 1914, and um, it's been passed on through the family until it got to me, and 
is in terrible need of restoration, as you can see. Now, this, how would you go about restoring something like this? Oh that, boy, uh, this is um, this is it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. You can see all the worn little pieces where the batting is showing through. This was a cotton batting that was used. That's all they had back there. They didn't have the polyester fibers we have today. Mm -hmm. All of these little stitches done by hand will have to be taken out one by one, um, and the shredded piece will have to be replaced. Hopefully, with a piece of a that was in another quilt long ago or of a fabric that I can can find that will be of about the same era. So that's what you look for in right. repairing is the material from that era. And okay. through all the quilts, that the old quilts that I've dealt with before, I have quite a, a collection of these old pieces so I can a lot of times find one that'll fit. Mm -hmm. If not, you can uh, tea dye or use other other techniques to make a fabric look old and you might have to incorporate a new fabric that's made to look old and put it in here. But this has all got to be done by hand, piece by piece, to mm -hmm. restore all that. Now this was your... My great-grandmother's, great -grandmother's uh, my father's side of the family. your father's side of the family. Mm -hmm. Gosh, over 112 years old. Mm -hmm. It's an old quilt. Can you tell me anything about uh, your heritage in this? I mean, your grandparents' uh, personality maybe is in this? Or well, what you my, preferred as far as design? My Aunt Mary, my father's sister, has spent about 10 years now, maybe a little bit longer, researching the family tree on this side of the family and she's come up with a book mm -hmm. that she in fact just I received this past winter on the the Wheelis family and okay. um, so what I know about her is in here because obviously she died long before I was born she I know how she died she was on a trip to visit one of her daughters in South Dakota and was in the farmhouse um, going to cut a watermelon of all things with a knife uh -huh. and it was during a thunderstorm and the lightning hit the knife and what she nice. died that's like being struck with, with lightning. That's fascinating. And um, all of these little tales have been researched, like I said, um, by my father's sister and are in this book here. Mm -hmm. I have, my mother's been an antique stealer for years and she's into the family history of things. So over the years, she shared with me some of the treasures she has picked up along the way from my family and passed them down uh, to me see. kindly. And this You is, were also telling me that, oh, that's This the, is her baby plate. Baby it's plate. Majolica, okay. which is very, very old. Um, I've looked in antique books up this pattern, and um, this dates back to, this was made right around 1865. My goodness. Now, you're also telling me that uh, your family has a tradition of quilting for your mother. I mean, it skipped a generation. It skipped more a less. generation, okay. right. Well, this is my great-grandmother's quilt. This is my grandmother's. grandmother, her daughter, uh, my father's mother. I remember as a youngster going into her house in Iowa, and she had a treadle sewing machine mm -hmm. with all the drawers to pull out, and I would Allow, be allowed when I was, oh gosh, seven or eight years old, to go through the drawers and I would make Barbie doll clothes on her treadle sewing machine and um, found lots and lots of, I'll show you this book okay. here, um, lots of little bits of fabric that some of them I were allowed to do things with, some were not to be touched by me. When yeah. my grandmother passed away in 1978, this box was found, was given to me, and in it were a few little pieces, squares actually, of fabric, and this which is on old yellowed graph paper, oh. a chart of what the pattern is called an Irish chain quilt, which is fairly easy um, to piece, but very, very time consuming. And some of the little squares were cut out okay. already, and some of the fabric still in there that has, I've got to cut out. I see. But this has all got, each square has got to be pieced together by hand. Uh -huh. and, um, so she was pretty active until the day she died in quilting, right? right? Yes, okay, and here's so the original little cardboard template or uh -huh. pattern that she used to draw around each square of fabric. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get this done sometime. Another um, quilt that was found, a partial quilt that was found, this is called a grandmother's flower garden. Oh my goodness. And these are octagon shaped pieces of fabric, maybe what, an inch and a half? Diameter, two inches in diameter, I guess this one would be. And um, many, many of these little tiny um, pieces were found. And this was, she did this most probably in the 1930s. You can sort of tell by the, the pattern in the fabrics. And mm -hmm. this was a very popular quilt pattern back in the 30s. And um, again, this was not finished. And it still isn't quilted as a quilt. Just the quilt top, as this is called, is, is just about completed. So again, I have. This has to be, each one of these pieces has to be done by hand. And I've been, you know, putting these all together again. Right. And hopefully this winter, being my goal, we'll get time to put the, the batting and the backing on the quilt and attempt the actual quilt. It'll all come it. together. Now this has got to be one of the most fascinating quilts I've ever seen. Could you describe what's involved in here and uh, well, exactly what we Well, it really is a family tree. This w belonged 
was started by my great grandmother on my mother's side. And Mary Moore, M O O R E, was her name. And what she did was she basically made a quilt, a uh, family tree, by making a quilt using the dresses of all the children in her family. She used um, the dresses of her daughters and her daughter's daughters that were born up until the time that she died, which is when she stopped working on this quilt. It's not finished. Mm -hmm. In the center of each block or square is embroidered the name of the girl whose dresses she used to make up this block. So each name we see, for instance, Ruth, this would be the dress material that her, she yes, wore? Yes, exactly. Looking at the, the heritage of quilting and the material they used, has it come uh, technology or I should say the way, the methods they used from then, has it changed much or is it pretty much the same? It has for a while. It's sort of funny. It's gone in a cycle. Um, I guess about 10 years ago, a lot of people were into using man-made fibers, more mm -hmm. polyesters, and of course they only use cotton blends or some wools, you see, and then the real fancy quilts, even some silks. Um, now it seems like it's gotten back to basics, and most people that I know consider it sort of cheating if you do a lot of the work on the machine, although many people do believe in machine quilting, this busy mm -hmm. day and age that we live in that speeds up the process, but people are back to more traditional fabrics. Like in my shop here, I only carry 100% cotton fabrics, as most quilters will insist upon using those. Mm -hmm. And hand quilting is very sought after and very popular, mm -hmm. and that's what rather you than machine quilting. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do, I do it the traditional time-consuming uh -huh. way. So do you think there's a, going to be a demand for doing things like you're doing, restoring quilts of this sort? Yes, and very much back so. Um, just from what I can see, I know how many times I've been approached by people once they find out that I do this type of work or they see the quilts in my shop um, and they have a family quilt that needs to be restored. I've got several in my possession right now um, that people have given me and um, I've got to, to restore them for them. So I, I think yes. I think people are more back to basics than are appreciating some of the older crafts like embroidery and tatting and quilting more than um, they were even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's amazing that you would find something. Um, perhaps people will be finding them in the attics or places that... Uh, I think they are, yes. Yeah. Now you're telling me that the, that the storing of quilts is important too because there's a deterioration, deterioration factor yes. and many things that we should watch out for. What are some of the things that uh, aren't that great for a quilt. Well, you should always store, since most quilts are, are old quilts are all made out of natural fibers, you should store them in something that breathes, um, like a cotton pillowcase, uh, not plastic, not like a plastic garbage bag. That's mm -hmm. real, real bad um, for a quilt. You want to keep your quilts out of direct sunlight as much as possible. If they receive any sunlight at all, they should be rotated if, say, they're on a dowel to be displayed or whatever. Rotate them. Wash them by hand very, very carefully. There are a number of products on the market that are made mm -hmm. especially for washing um, old, old vintage fabrics um, or take it to a reputable dry cleaner that specializes in, in dry cleaning vintage clothing or quilts. You want to keep it away from smoke. Um, just, I guess that's about it. Some, some of the deterioration is going to happen anyway, right. especially with the dyes that were used. Where do you plan on going with your quilting? Are you venturing more into the restoration process? Or um, is there any possibly. I find it real interesting, especially for the quilts in my own family. Um, I, right now I do several um, art and craft shows a year with mm -hmm. my quilts and quilted items, and that's real rewarding. And I have my, my shop here, mm -hmm. and I meet with a lot of other quilters. I've made friends over the years with um, quite a few quilters, and uh, I don't, my goal is just to, to keep quilting, I guess. Yes, and uh, preserving the heritage and putting, yes. putting the new heritage down for posterity, more or less, too. That's a, it, a, yeah. A good day. Well, Jody, thank you very much for appearing on Michigan Magazine, and we wish the best of luck to you and your quilting and your uh, preservation of uh, the heritage we have in here in Copper Harbor and everywhere in the United States. Quilting does seem to bring people together, doesn't it? It really does. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for Thank appearing. you. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, 
rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Hey, thanks for joining us as we hit those Michigan back roads. Don't forget to get up and get out and enjoy what we have in this great lake state. We'd love to help you be able to do that. We know gas prices are high and budgets are tight, so a bunch of Michigan resorts have said, hey, let's give a few vacations away to let people know you don't have to travel far to enjoy Michigan. We've got vacations and giveaways to places like Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman, Canyons Resort near Lupton, Old 27 Cabins near Clare, and Log Haven Resort near Rose City. Plus, we're giving away gas cards, dinners, gift cards of all sorts. All you've got to do is email us your name, address, and telephone number to iwatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com. We'll start drawing winners very soon. That's all there is to it. No catch. Just a lot of chances to make it a Michigan vacation this year. Hey, mention today's word of the day and get three extra chances to win. And that word of the day is Pontiac, as in Pontiac, Michigan, the filming location of that blockbuster movie, Oz the Great and Powerful. Have a great week. We'll see you all here next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Hale Hardware, your do it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. The Michigan made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile.